In this video, we're going to discuss setting up the equation of motion for a pendulum and then solve it for an exact solution. Now, in the textbooks, what you see is an approximate solution that is good for only very small angular displacements. Here we want to try to derive an equation and solve it that works for all angular displacements of the pendulum. I think this is video number 21 now in our analytical mechanical series. Um, the playlist for all the videos is at digital-university.org. So here we have just a simple pendulum and the arc length that it swings through, we call that x, and the angular displacement theta is measured in radians. The length of the pendulum is L, so the arc displacement x, that will equal L times theta, or the velocity of it, dx dt, x dot, that will equal the length times theta dot. Now let's say that when the pendulum reaches its bottommost point right here, that at that point then the potential energy is zero. So afterwards then the potential energy of the system, of course that's going to be the typical formula is mgh, where h now is the how high the pendulum is how high above that zero point. Now, when it is down here at the bottommost point of its arc, of course, that length from top to bottom, that's L. When it's, say, over here, and we draw a horizontal line, then this length is L times the cosine of theta. So, this distance right here is going to be L minus L times the cosine of theta. So that's the potential energy given right there, and we can factor the L out. The kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, or one-half m x dot squared, which is this. And again, the potential energy is mgl times 1 minus the cosine of theta. Now, once we have the equation set up then for kinetic energy and potential, we could go ahead and take the Lagrangian of the system if we wanted to, or we also realize that the total energy of the system is constant, so that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is equal to a constant. So let's start with that. We have kinetic energy is one half m l squared theta dot squared. And then we have the potential energy and We'll write this out then as mgl minus mgl cosine of theta. And that has to be equal to a constant. So if we take the derivative of this side with respect to t, d dt, the derivative of the constant, of course, is zero, so this will equal zero now. Then we go ahead and take derivatives. Remember now, theta dot, that is of course, d theta dt. So taking derivatives, we will have, bring the two down here, and we will have m l squared. Take the two down, then we'll have 
theta dot times the derivative of this, which is designated that as theta dot dot. Remember, theta dot is d theta dt. So taking the derivative of this, it will equal 2 times theta dot, then times the derivative of theta dot. And we take the 2, of course, it crosses, the one, crosses out with the 1 half. So you have m l squared theta dot, then theta dot dot, that derivative of theta dot. This will be 0. Then here we'll have the derivative of the cosine. That's minus. So we have a minus sign here. So that will be plus L M G times the sine of theta. Then times the derivative of that d theta dt, where that is theta dot, equals 0. And it looks like we have some cancellations here. This will cancel out. This will cancel out. And we have L squared here and L here. So this and this cancel. So we have L theta dot dot. And plus g sine of theta equals 0. Or we can have theta dot dot, the angular acceleration will equal minus g over l times the sine of theta. And then what they do in most textbooks when they get to this point, they consider this equation for very small angular displacements. And then at that point, the sine of theta for a small theta is approximately theta. So in most textbooks, they'll say that this is approximately equal to minus g over l times theta. Again, and this is this is a good approximation only for very small angles, only for very tiny, small uh, angular displacements. But we have a second order differential equation. Then when we saw that, uh, of course, that brings in sine and cosine functions. We had discussed that in some detail, actually. I think it was in video number eight in our analytical mechanical series. What we want to do in this video is consider the equation not just for small angular displacements, but for all angular displacements. And to get, to get it set up to solve this, going back to here, we canceled theta dot out. Now the trick is to put it back in. So we have theta dot here, and we have theta dot here. Now let's write this out longhand. This is d theta dt. That's theta dot. Then this is d dt of d theta dt. And that equals minus g over L times the sine of theta d theta dt. Let's look at this again. Theta dot, that's d theta dt. Theta dot dot, that would be d dt of d theta dt. Then here we have this, and that's d theta dt. Now multiply both sides of the equation by dt. So this cancels, and 
these can cancel. Now let's see what we have. This is just theta dot. And then here we have the differential of d theta dt. But this is just theta dot, so we have d theta dot. That's this expression. Then this over here is just minus g over l times the sine of theta d theta. Now let's set it up to integrate. We have these integrals, theta dot d theta dot. Well, if we had this kind of integral, x dx, we'd see well, that's just one half x squared plus a constant. Now, if I had the integral of x dot dx dot, and that'll be one half x dot squared plus a constant. So this is going to be one half theta dot squared. So let's get that into there. And we'll also have constants, but we'll take care of those in a moment. Here we just have one half theta dot squared and then the integral of the sine of theta is minus the cosine of theta. There's a minus sign here, so that equals g over l times the cosine of theta. And then both of these have constants of integration, so we'll lump them together into a single constant of integration. So this right now is the equation for the pendulum, we have to determine what is this constant of integration. And I think we'll stop the video right here and we'll consider that in part two of the video. This is starting to be a little bit long, but right now this is the equation. This is the angular velocity is equal to g over l cosine of theta, and now we have to determine what is this constant of integration. Then when we do that, then we'll have the complete equation for the pendulum. But let's uh, take that up in the second part of this video. So come back, join us for part two, and we'll just try to figure out what, exactly what this constant of integration is.